You're good. Um, <laughs> I am doing um, a story of Ruth, <laughs> as we've already discussed. Um, my subject is how does God bless Ruth's decision um, to trust in him? And my compliment is he redeems her through friendship, love, and a royal lineage. And um, the VIE is God redeems Ruth through <laughs> these three things. Yeah. Um, the audience is my campus ministry back in Philadelphia, which is about, probably about 20, 20, 25 girls. And it's girls from all different backgrounds. We have like a large group of we have kingdom kids, then we have people who grew up in the city, and we have kind of just like a mix, and so it's a little bit disunified. Um, so just trying to help them understand, the, like, one, the importance of being friends, but also the importance of being women mm-hmm. and to men, you know, mm-hmm. um, and kind of like how God blesses that. So I'm starting off, my, and my title <laughs> is Redemption Through Reverence. Mm-hmm. Um, have any of you guys gone through a time in your life when you thought that things couldn't get worse, and not only could they not get worse, but that they would never get better. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there was a time for me, my senior year of college, I really hit a wall, just emotionally. Um, I was diagnosed with a fertility disorder that uh, would make it harder for me to have kids in the future, and along with that, found out that I had low-grade depression and had to seek treatment for that. And, um, and also during this time, my roommate and best friend of three and a half years was getting married when I had never even dated or held a guy's hand. Um, and so I was really, really struggling with trying to figure out, like, what is God trying to tell me? What am I supposed to learn from this? How is, how is this going to change? Um, and it's funny because I think, you know, in the Bible, the story that most aptly kind of describes this is, is the story of Ruth. Um, she went through really hard time, and, and yet God taught her something really powerful through it. Um, turning over to Ruth 1, if you guys can go there, um, in verses 1 through 5, it says, In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And a man from Bethlehem and Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Kilian also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. We're already at the beginning of this story. We're only first five verses into it, and there's a famine, and, and these three men have died. And mm-hmm. I think about this situation. It looks completely, you know, desperate. And, and yet, um, as we read on, you see that, that it's, it's not. And just to give a little bit of background insight, too, into it history-wise, the Moabites were historically an enemy of the Israelites. Moses had passed through Moab purposely with the Israelites when they were escaping from Egypt because he didn't want to go through Moabite territory. And, um, And so for people to, in the first place, flee to Moab from Judah was, already shows their desperation. You know, they were starving. Um, but also too, to marry to marry Moabite woman um, also shows that like there was there was definitely a rift there, um, and I think as as we read on we can see how God works through this really challenging situation um, to really to really restore uh, these women. Mm-hmm. Um, so in six through eighteen, I'm not going to read this if that's okay. <laughs> um, but I think what in this passage, in, in Ruth 1, 6 through 18, it's interesting to me because Ruth and Orpah had the same decision. Mm-hmm. They were presented with the same question. You know, will you come back with me yeah. to, um, to Judah? And, and it's funny because Naomi begs them both to leave. And I think it's kind of like that, the kind of when women, we, we say we don't want it, but we really do. It's like <laughs> we're saying what we don't mean. But I think that um, what Ruth did was she really, she really desired 
to, to be with Naomi because she saw her need for that relationship. And I think about myself, and I think about how often I've sat in self-pity instead of really looking for the need that's around me. And that's what Ruth did, because Ruth had every, every reason to be just as sad as Naomi was. But you don't hear about Ruth, you know, sitting around and crying out. You hear about her giving to her mother-in-law. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think, first of all, friendship is a decision. Yeah. Um, and my first point is, is relationships, um, is friendship. Um, <clears throat> because instead of being full of self-pity, Ruth, Ruth chose to invest herself in Naomi. And in doing so, she built a relationship with her that not only would cross all cultural and physical differences, but it would also help both of their joy to be restored. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think about just even their relationship. I mean, mother-in-law relationships are kind of awkward. You know, they're not the most natural relationship or just even friendship. Mm-hmm. Um, they were from different cultures. They probably spoke different languages originally, had different gods. Mm-hmm. Um, also along with that their age I mean there was probably an age difference and um, I think we come up with so many excuses to, to find differences I can't relate to her because she doesn't mm. listen to the same music as me or you know we, she didn't grow up in the kingdom she doesn't understand what it's like to be a kingdom kid or whatever and, and really with God we can overcome those differences and not only that I think what, what bonded them together was they had a shared emotional experience mm-hmm. a loss and I think the more open we are with our emotional pain, mm-hmm. the more we grow closer and those yeah. physical barriers are diminished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think another thing in Ruth 2, too, is that it says that Ruth asked Naomi, let me go and glean in the fields. And I think about in friendships, how really like we need to take the initiative to serve one another. Mm-hmm. Our friends shouldn't have to ask us to serve them. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I really think about how humble Ruth was. Here she is in a foreign land. She doesn't know anybody. Mm -hmm. And here she is going out to serve her mother-in-law and get food for them. And uh, that just really challenged me. Because how quick am I to serve other people uh, when I'm in an uncomfortable situation? Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you guys, how are you serving the woman in the ministry above yourself? Mm-hmm. You know, or are you letting your situation or your emotions take control of you um, and pull you away from relationships? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we really can block God's blessings when we choose to be, be self-reliant and instead of selfless. Mm-hmm. Uh, because as we read on in, in Ruth 2, um, we read about how Ruth meets Boaz mm-hmm. and how Boaz is this really amazing man of very noble character. Um, and that's my second point. Yeah, that's okay. eight, eight minutes. Good job. Good job. <laughs>